1982. So there are bills in Congress to remove the deadlines on the 7-2 ERA in support of this three-state strategy, the only three states necessary. So the main point I make is that Congress retains authority to declare the ERA ratification process valid after the 38 states state ratified. And I might say that this likely <coughs> equal pay raises for Congress was so important that it survived. It survived from 1789 to 203 years later. I suggest that the Equal Rights Amendment is of that same category. <coughs> it's so important that women be given the same equal rights as men. Madam Chair, you're here because of the movement of history recognize that women deserve equal rights. And it, 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 it's something that's happened over the years. I'll use a personal reference. When I first appeared before the General Assembly to speak against massive resistance, it was all men, frankly, all white men, elderly white men. And now look at this General Assembly. As a movement of history, and we are part of that movement, and really it cannot be stopped. But I hope this committee can <coughs> recognize what's going on. Women are just as valuable, probably more valuable than men in the process. So let's say that, let the process go forward. If this three states, three states strategy is wrong, then the men will fail. But this is the moment that this committee can recognize and join the movement of history. The people should not be denied opportunities to be able to go to the And I have several speakers on that. Yeah, we'll have questions. We'll call for that. We have questions for the patron. Question. Uh, the, uh, the Madison Amendment, it did have a, uh, when Congress submitted it to the states, they didn't submit it with a deadline, did they? Really, I wasn't there in the <laughs> <laughs> they, they did not, I can, I can tell you that. So. I think they were employed, but the congressional research um, has research this term. They've concluded that Congress has a policy. If it's not in the text of the amendment, Congress has a policy. Follow up question. And, and Congress uh, originally set a deadline for 1979 for this amendment, and then they extended it to 1982. Have they taken any action to extend it beyond 1982? Well, when the Madison Amendment was ratified. Well, I'm not talking about the Madison Amendment. I'm talking about the ERA. I don't think it's been submitted. There is a controversy in Congress now. There's a bill submitted to clear that up. But looking at this moment in history in Virginia, this is the time for Virginia to speak up and say, we think we're going to receive equal rights. But after that, frankly, it's going to be up to Congress. But I hope we take advantage of this opportunity. We, we don't get many chances like this to be on the right side of history. I hope we can. First of all, uh, talking about the array is talking about history. And, um, and I can note that no one has more standing to talk about civil rights history in Virginia than Senator Henry Marsh. He mentioned that he spoke to a joint session of the General Assembly um, denouncing massive resistance. When he did that, he was a student of college at the University, Virginia University. And his career has been one um, not only dismantling segregation, but standing up for civil rights. He joined us the greatest lawyers our state's produced, Spider Robinson, Oliver Hill, um, yeah. take the, the whole fraternity of great civil rights lawyers. Just, you know, uh, Bradley Bridge, Virginia, uh, Green Bruce, New Kent County, Senator Marsh was there. I know that uh, probably no one has greater standing than the 140 of us who serve in the General Assembly and mm -hmm. Senator Marsh. And I note also that uh, he later became mayor of the city of Richmond and 
during the period of time when he was mayor of Richmond, the Daughters of the Confederacy had a get-together over the Jefferson Davis statues of Washington Avenue, and they invited this, the uh, mayor of Richmond to come over and speak to him, not knowing who the, who the mayor was. <laughs> and, uh, uh, mayor March appeared in front of those ladies and charmed their hearts, and I know that because my mother was one of them. Uh, and came back and told me how she met the, the mayor of Richmond and what he had done that afternoon. So as we get into this, uh, I think uh, having a spokesman for me in the marsh is not only historical, but very appropriate in this manner. But uh, focusing on the uh, legal rights amendment, there's been uh, uh, an MC history of this. You know, it was filed back in, uh, in 1923 originally. And it finally made it out of two-thirds of Congress under Article 5 of the Constitution in 1972. It was supported by President Richard Nixon, uh, who was then not yet president, but he supported it even back when he was in Congress. And originally, it had a seven-year requirement for ratification, which would take it to 17, rather 1979. <coughs> in 1978, Congress did something kind of unusual. They, they by a simple majority vote, put on another three years on top of it. Without two thirds majority, so an interesting question of whether or not that was constitutional enough that they did it. Uh, then in 1982, um, the, uh, the Equal Rights Amendment uh, basically reached its termination deadline. And I note that uh, even the Supreme Court of the United States was considering the question whether or not one state, I believe it was Idaho, could rescind their previous approval. And that case went up to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court took the appeal, but later dismissed the appeal after June 30, 1982, when, when the as extended deadline went over. So I, I read the Supreme Court as saying that appeal became moot because the ERA basically became null and void by its own terms. But I note that uh, uh, I was doing some research last night and I saw that Senator. Uh, Menendez of New Jersey has filed a Senate Joint Resolution 10 on March 5, 2003, to basically restart the Equal Rights Amendment. And if Senator Reid were to bring this to the Senate floor and pass it with two thirds, and then Speaker Boehner brings it to the House floor and pass it with two thirds, we might be here, Madam Chairman, one year from now, looking at ratification on a freshly adopted uh, resolution to make the Equal Rights Amendment the 28th. The uh, amendment to the Constitution. But I think until that happens, Madam Chairman, um, we have a, a resolution that uh, passed Congress properly in 1972, but has <coughs> since become null and void. So our exercise of ratification really can't be done at this juncture. We can memorialize Congress, we can do all this kind of stuff. But, but I think if our purpose here today is to ratify the Equal Rights Amendment, we send that to um, the floor, I think. We really can't do it through this vehicle. Thank you, Dahlia. Would you? Uh, I know we have folks here to speak in favor. Ms. Corn? Yes. Senator? Yes. Okay, I'd ask them to come forward. Good morning. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, my name is Candace Graham. I'm one of the co founders of Women Matter Use Your Power, which is an organization we formed expressly for uh, moving a the um, ERA ratification forward. Uh, we're part of a national coalition uh, who support the three-state strategy that Senator Marsh has described. And I'd like to present some petition signatures from people who also support this three-state strategy. Um, uh, just to address what uh, Delhi mentioned, and, uh, mentioned um, about uh, SJ Res 10 and Senator Menendez uh, is the chief patron of that bill. Um, he is also one of the co-sponsors of a bill that's currently in the, in the uh, Senate to remove the deadline for ratification. So there are a couple of different ways of going at this and um, Delta Cole's comments uh, about uh, the uh, Amendment, um, the 27th Amendment, having um, no deadline attached to that. But that is certainly one of the arguments that is presented in the Congressional Review Study. Uh, they present both sides of the ar <coughs> argument. They don't draw conclusions.
conclusions, but there are ample arguments in here to support uh, the three-state strategy process. Um, if you don't mind, I'd like to just share my personal story with you for, for a moment. Um, back in 1972, when the ERA was passed by Congress, I was still in college. And upon graduation, I started working at a bank as a head teller. Um, my male colleagues were admitted into the management training program. Um, <clears throat> we have come a long way since then as far as opportunities for women. Uh, my younger daughter is a level two microbiologist for a major pharmaceutical company. Um, does she get paid the same amount as her male colleagues at the same level? I don't know, but I, I want there not to be a question as to whether or not women are receiving equal pay for equal work. Uh, when we began blogging for ERA ratification, we pitched this as the sweetheart bipartisan bill, referring to its history of bipartisan sponsorship. And we saw the ERA as a way for us all to come together in support of providing the constitutional protection that would deny discrimination in the marketplace equal opportunities and equal pay for equal work. We're going to help women and their families move off of public assistance roles, something we all want to see. And since the beginning of this session, we've provided you quite a bit of information about the ERA Bill SJ78 and or the companion bill in the House HJ12. And we've met with your legislative aides, and a few of you were kind enough to see us and hear our arguments in support of the bill and share your concerns. <coughs> As Senator Marsh pointed out, the uh, Madison bill uh, amendment was ratified 203 years after it was first introduced. Um, the deadline on the Equal Rights Amendment was added to the preamble, not the body of the amendment. I'm citing the Congressional Review Study. <coughs> Article 5 of the Constitution grants exceptionally broad discretion and authority over the constitutional amendment process to Congress. And it says that the decision of one Congress in setting a deadline for ratification of an amendment does not constrain a later Congress from rescinding the deadline. And Congress has already removed the deadline once in 1979 when they extended it to 1982, so they have already demonstrated their power to do so. Um, as I mentioned, there are two bipartisan bills in the U.S. Congress, SJ Res 15 and HJ Res 43, to remove the deadline for ratification. We currently have 34 U.S. Senate bipartisan co-sponsors, including both Virgin Virginia senators and 104 congressperson co-sponsors with others pending sponsorship. There are seven state legislatures, including Virginia, that have not as yet ratified <coughs> excuse me, the ERA and are introducing the bill in their legislatures in 2014 and two more states in 2015, which suggests that the amendment is very contemporary and relevant indeed. <coughs> to quote Senator Waters' legislative aide, who we met with last year, we are working on dual tracks. Uh, we were asking Senator Warner to co-sponsor SJ Res 15 to remove the deadline. And he asked, why didn't we get the needed three states to ratify first and then come with the bill to drop the deadline? And we explained that the states wanted us to get Congress to remove the deadline first. So we need both to move forward simultaneously, dual tracks. This is a civil rights issue, and denying discrimination on the basis of race was a long, hard-fought battle, and no one would suggest that it isn't worth it. 97% of Americans believe the U.S. Constitution should deny discrimination on the basis of gender, but until three more states ratify the ERA, the 35 states that already have ratified, are denied that protection. And I'm requesting the subcommittee's members to acknowledge women's right to equal protection in the United States Constitution 
and please report the bill to Privileges and Elections Committee. Thank you. Thank you. Um, because we want to take a vote this morning, we, we have other committees that are going to meet in 10 minutes. I just want to try to limit the, the conversation a little bit, particularly if we're going to say the same thing. But I want to hear from everyone. But if we're going to say the same thing, you know, just kind of rebrief it a little bit. So we can hear from both, both sides. And then um, have time for discussion also. That's OK, Senator. Before you do, let me ask. So many people are here. Okay. because I'm a white male. Well, there's good news. This says you can't be discriminated against based on gender. This doesn't say women. The reason you're looking at women here is because we are the 77 cents on the dollar crowd who has felt it in the hip pocket long enough that we're up here and we're vocal and we aren't going away. But it protects you too. So if you've got an issue, you can put this card in your hip pocket and bring it out and say, the United States Constitution protects me, and through the 14th Amendment, it's incorporated back to the states, and I want my time. Now, um, I want to. Yes. Oh, I'm, okay, I'm going to move through this. I got up at 4 this morning to get here, so I'm hoping the committee will be patient enough to hear what well, we well, We have to adjourn at 8.30. Oh, I'm not going to go that long. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and those speakers, I'm sure, can be, you want to recognize them now? Or? Okay. Okay. Right, stand up if you um, plan to speak. Well, I have specific things that I really think the committee needs to hear. And I will be very brief. I have heard that the House of Delegates does not have the authority to consider this. I would like to ratchet your imaginations back to a horse costume with somebody in the front and somebody in the rear. The Senate's already taken it on the nose. They are the front of the horse costume. They have gone through this wall of, is there authority to do it? We believe you have authority to do it. Virginia Constitution 1, Section 11, which I have been quoted, book, chapter, and verse, provides equality, is separate but equal, and it didn't work for civil rights, and it doesn't work for gender rights. Um, well, if any of you are interested, I have worked on this for several weeks. I would love to have your ear. I promise you I can give you a closing argument that will keep you awake if you vote against it. I'm looking for your support. We want a fair shot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman and members. Sometimes because of familiarity, we fail to recognize the giants among us. There is one sitting at this table. 
If Senator Myers has been fighting all these years for civil rights, I think he has earned the right to have all of his proposals listened to very carefully. The League of Women Voters strongly supports his leadership and we strongly support the passage of this measure before you. Thank you. Uh, Dinah Gosku, I'm the Virginia now president. I know what you said, but the same case, once it said it was moot, they also said that it was not up to the state legislatures to say uh, um, that it was dead. It's up to them to give a yes or no vote. So it also, they also said that. And the Congressional Research Service has said it over and over again in many reports over the years, including last year, that it is not a dead issue. It can be voted on. So uh, Virginia now supports this. My name is Andrea Miller. I am one of the co-founders of Women Matter Youth of Power. I am also one of the leaders of Progressive Vote, which is a state pack in Virginia. One of my other jobs is I spend a tremendous amount of time in the United States Congress, and this is specifically one of the pieces of legislation that I work on. So SJ 15 currently has 34 senators on it. SJ-10, the bill to start over, has 16. There is more support in the United States Senate to remove the deadline and advance this forward than there is not. We will be coming to the floor of the United States Senate in the year 2014. This bill is very much alive just as I am alive and in front of you. I will be coming to the floor in the United States House of Representatives on a discharge petition. This bill is very much a lot. It is a sleep, but it was my job to wake it up. Thank you. Well, I, we need to ask for opposition. Oh, I guess my very, very briefly, I wasn't actually planning, but it's gone as it has. My name is Eileen Slade, and I'm a resident of Virginia, Chesterfield County, and I'm also a member of Women Matter, Use Your Power. My husband and I, and I both receive reduced Social Security now. I have a college education, he does not, but guess who has double the Social Security? And yet, I only took off very limited amount of time to have my children. He has maybe two years more of work experience than I do. The salary difference, the income difference, I was always paid far <coughs> less than he was. So I receive today, I'm going into my twilight years with 50%, almost exactly half of his social security. Remember that. So when you're debating this, this is real in dollars. I'm 64, and that's what I now receive, half of what my husband receives. Remember that. This really is about a woman's survival and, and, and raising children and having enough money to do it. Finally, I'm a member of Women Matter, Use Your Power. We are growing in force. We had an impact elections, recent elections, and we vote. We vote, and we will make a difference at the polls. Thank you very much. Madam Chair, yes. Ben Greenberg, Virginia Organizing. We also support this measure, but I'd also like to say I'd like to stand up on behalf of all the men of the Commonwealth who also support this measure, and I'm sorry they can't fit all the way. Okay. Anyone to speak in opposition of the legislation? I'm Bruce Kemp. I'm speaking for the Family Foundation. As has been mentioned, 35 states have uh, ratified this uh, ERA amendment, but there's five states that rescinded the amendment, uh, Idaho, Kentucky, Nebraska, Tennessee, and South Dakota. So they had spoken back and said they did not want it. And in 1982, as you've heard, the Supreme Court declared the entire matter moot on the grounds that the 1972 ERA amendment was dead, with or without the five states that rescinded uh, their ratification. So the Family Foundation asks you to vote no on Senate Joint Resolution 78. Thank you. Anyone else to speak in opposition? 
Senator. Yes, sir. This is not a policy issue. 